How much does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do for us? He created us. He gave us life. He gave us good health. He gave us wealth. He gave us children. He gave us, gave us wives and spouses. He gave us beautiful homes to live in. He promises for us an eternal paradise. He will elevate our status and let us look at his face on the day of judgment. How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love us so much? is shown by the fact that even when we disobey him, he still feeds us, he still clothes us, he still lets us breathe by Allah. He still provides for us and nourishes us and sustains us. Even whilst we're disobeying him by Allah, even when we're committing that sin, Allah is still letting us breathe. Allah is still letting us eat our food. Ya Salam. How great and how noble and how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is it so that Abu Bakr, as the Emir, as the head of a state, he would travel every day after Fajr to a blind elderly woman's house and clean her house and prepare her children, tend to her animals, and yet she didn't even, she didn't even know who he, who he was, who this man was. What about Umar Khattab radiallahu anhu? What about him? He was on his way to kill the Prophet ﷺ, to kill the Prophet ﷺ, and instead he accepted Islam and his love for Allah Azza wa and his deen was so great that while all the other Muslims, while all the other Muslims were hiding their Islam, he was ready to proclaim his Islam. What about Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu arda? What about him when he was asked to give? He, when he gave, my dear brothers and sisters, he gave from the best of what we had. Uthman ibn Affan, he gave the best of what he had in all of what he had or as much as he could. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. The Sahaba said that they left him after Isha in Ruku' and they came before Fajr and they found him in Ruku' except there was one difference. There was one difference. That his beard was soaked. His beard was soaked and there was a puddle beneath him. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. But by Allah, you are special. You are special. He created you and you're more valuable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the Kaaba. Wallahi, the scholars of Islam say, the tears of a believer are more precious than the Kaabans. Hakada qala shawkani. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up in the depths of the night. It is authentically reported in Al-Bukhari that he raised his hands up to the heavens and he said, Oh Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. Ya Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. Ya Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. He couldn't say more than that. He couldn't finish his sentences because he was so emotional. Until the night passed and the last third of the night came. Until Fajr time came. And at that point, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came down and said, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah has sent me and said, Ya Muhammad, your Lord will not disappoint you regarding your ummah. Your Lord will not disappoint you regarding your ummah. The question is, brothers and sisters of Islam, are we going to disappoint our Prophet sallallahu What is it that you have done to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you love him? To prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he asks you on the day of judgment, Ya Abdi, Ya Abdi, O my slave, how have you proven that you love me so that I may love you back on this day? Be you of those people who fulfill his vision. Be you of those people who fulfill your love for Allah Azzawajal by pursuing the vision of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on this earth. Ask yourself, do you love Allah? The question I have for you, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is this, what have you done to prove your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have you at the very least spread Islam? Have you at the very least fed a poor person? Have you at the very least rubbed your hands on the hair of an orphan? How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love us so much? 
the Prophet ﷺ said, Wallahi, indeed Allah loves us and loves, loves people far more than a mother who has lost her child when she finds her child back. Imagine when a mother who's lost a child finds the child for the first time, how much does she love the child, subhanAllah. It is for this reason why Sufyana Thawri rahimahullah used to say, Wallahi, I would rather have Allah as my judge on the day of judgment rather than my own parents. Why? Because I know Allah loves me more than my own parents. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, how much does Allah love us? Is shown by the fact that even when we disobey Him, He still feeds us, He still clothes us, He still lets us breathe by Allah. He still provides for us and nourishes us and sustains us. Even whilst we're disobeying Him by Allah, even when we're committing that sin, Allah is still letting us breathe, Allah is still letting us eat our food. Ya Salam. How great and how noble and how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the loving God, Al Wadud, the one who loves, the one who has mercy with his creation, the one who loves to love his creation, the one who loves his creation so much so that the love that he has sent on this earth is only one part of 99 parts that he has prepared for the believers in the day of judgment. So, my brothers and my sisters in Islam, what have you done to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you love him? What is it that you have done to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you love him? My slave, what have you done to prove that you love me? My brothers and my sisters in Islam, by Allah, there is not a single person, the one who is speaking and the one being spoken to, except that he will find a level of hypocrisy in his heart in this question by Allah. Wallahi, we say we love Allah, but we are not true in our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say we love Allah, but by Allah, our actions are lacking. How is it so that Abu Bakr, as the Amir, as the head of a state, Amirul Mu'mineen, my dear brothers and sisters, how is it that he would travel every day? He would travel every day after Fajr to a blind elderly woman's house and clean her house. And yet she didn't even, she didn't even know who he, who he was, who this man was, what this man did. All she knew was that a man came and provided for her. How is it, if not for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what else did, did Abu Bakr do it for? Did he do it for money? He was one of the richest. Did he do it for status, prestige? He was Amir al-Mu'mineen, the head of a state. So my dear brothers and sisters, such was the love that Abu Bakr radiallahu an had for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an? What about him? He was on his way to kill the Prophet ﷺ, to kill the Prophet ﷺ, and instead he accepted Islam. And his love for Allah Azza wa Jal and his deen was so great that while all the other Muslims, while all the other Muslims were hiding their Islam, he was ready to proclaim his Islam. He was ready to tell everyone about this new ni'mah, this new rahmah that Allah Azza wa Jal bestowed upon him. Such was the love that he had with Allah Azza wa Jal. What about Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu arda? What about him when he was asked to give? He, when he gave, my dear brothers and sisters, when he gave, he gave from the best of what we had. Imagine, imagine, when we give, we give things that we don't use. We give second-hand items. We give the extra money that we don't need. Uthman ibn Affan, he gave the best of what he had in all of what he had or as much as he could. When the Prophet ﷺ asked for military uh, equipment for a battle, Uthman ibn Affan, he didn't give used items. He gave what we would be an equivalent of today, fully loaded Humvees. He brought the best camels. He brought the best shields and swords, fully loaded camels ready to fight, my dear brothers and sisters. Imagine the cost he uh, took on, upon himself to provide this for the Muslims. Such was the love. If he didn't do it for the love of Allah جل, as we said before, if it wasn't for the love of Allah, what was it for? Did he need to become popular? No. His status was there. His wealth was there. He had everything he needed. He only desired Allah جل. He desired to have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such was the love that he had for him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. 
What do you think allowed him to, to spend the entire night in Salah? The entire night in ibadah of Allah Azza wa Jal. The Sahaba said that they left him after Isha and Ruku' and they came before Fajr and they found him in Ruku' except there was one difference. There was one difference. That his beard was soaked. His beard was soaked and there was a puddle beneath him. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. What gave him the happiness to do that? To pray all night. He was one of the ten promised Jannah, my dear brothers. One of the ten promised Jannah. Yet he worked like he was, he was promised Jahannam. Because his desire, his love to be with Allah, even though he was promised Jannah, pushed him to work as hard. Such was the genuine love that Ali ibn Abi Talib had. What about people like Ahmed ibn Hanbal? The love he had, Ya Allah, is just humbling. This is a man, we can claim those were Sahaba. A knowledgeable man, like you and me. When he was arrested once, the punishment for him was 100 lashes. 100 lashes on the great Imam, Rahimahullah. So when they executed this punishment, it was executed in public. And the, the people saw it, and his students saw it. So the executor, he began to whip. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. 100 lashes. And in between those, those lashes, he passed out. When he regained consciousness, he found that his students had gathered around him in his house. First question he asked, after being whipped and everything, he said, did you guys pray Asr? And his students replied, yes. So he said, then make wudu for me so I can pray the Asr. And then after the Salah, the students were around him and they asked him a question. They asked him, oh Shaykh, when the whipper was whipping you, we were crying out of the pain that you were going through, yet you were smiling. You were smiling. Why? So the Imam, rahimahullah, he said, he said, you guys were looking at the hand of the whipper. He said, but I was looking at the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah. If it wasn't for the love that he had for Allah Azza wa Jal, how else would he think the way he thought in his punishment? Put yourselves in, in the shoes of these great men, in these situations, and then ask yourself, would you have reacted the same? Would you have done the same? Would you have thought the same? And ultimately, ultimately, ask yourself, do you love Allah? No one amongst us does not want to love Allah. Every single Muslim in this audience and out there, the billions of Muslimin, everyone will say, I love Allah or I want to love Allah. However, certain things prevent them from proving their love for Allah. The first thing that prevents them is this negativity. I can't be that great. I can't prove my love to Allah. I've done too much sins. I'm not someone special. I don't have Islamic knowledge. I only know so little. I'm not from a great family. I'm not a great speaker. How can I truly do so many things? How can I prove my actions? How can I increase my actions in order to prove my love to Allah I'm no one special. But by Allah, you are special. You are special. The Prophet wasallam said, when a slave stands in his salah and he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah answers the slave back and says, my slave had, has praised me. So every time you speak to Allah, Allah speaks to you back. You are not a person in six billion. You are the person in six billion at that moment. Because Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, despite looking after the affairs of creation has time for you. Oh my brothers and my sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pays attention to you. He created you and you're more valuable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the Kaaba. Wallahi the scholars of Islam say, the tears of a believer are more precious than the Kaabas. Hakada qala shawkani. A shawkani rahimullah says, the tears of a believer are more precious to Allah than indeed the Kaaba itself. 
Have you not heard, Shokani says, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that indeed seven people will be given shade on the day of judgment. And one of those people to be given shade on the day of judgment will be a man who remembers Allah and out of fear and love for Allah, his eyes tear, wallahi. And so he says, wallahi, the tears are more beloved to Allah than the, than the Kaaba by Allah. So my beloved brothers and sisters of Islam, do not be of those people who are negative about your love for Allah Azawajal. Be of those people who are positive about it. Every single time you feel negative, every single th time you feel you can't prove your love to Allah Azawajal, every single time you think of doing something to show Allah Azawajal, Ya Rabb, you are more important to me than the whole of this dunya, Ya Allah. Every single time you feel like this, remember by Allah, the Prophet was a very positive person. Be very positive about yourself. Be very positive that you can make a change. Be very positive that you will have an effect in changing the Ummah. Every single time the believers in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet were being negative, the Prophet was positive. Every single time when Yusuf was in the bottom of the well, in his greatest moment of despair, there came upon him an angel by the name of Jibreel who told him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him the following thing. Verily, O Yusuf, a day will come when you will tell them about what they have done and by Allah, they will not even know that it is you telling them. And this is the positivity of Islam. When the mother of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, was despairing, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell her? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told her, throw Musa into the river. Indeed, my enemy will grab him. And then by Allah, out of Allah's mercy, in some way or the other, Allah will return Musa back to his mother so that she does not despair. Positivity in the eyes of negativity. When the people stood there and said, we're going to throw this little boy by the name of Ibrahim into this huge fire. What did Ibrahim say? Hasbun Allahu ni'mal wakil. Ibn Abbas said, this was said by three people. The first person who said it was Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. When the people all gathered together, built a huge fire to throw Ibrahim in there. What did he say? Positivity in the eyes of tremendous negativity. Hasbun Allahu ni'mal wakil. Allah is our protector and enough is he a protector over us. My brothers and sisters in Islam, when Ibrahim wanted to kill his son, what did his son say in the eyes of negativity? His son said what? He said, Ya Abati, if Alma Tu'mar Satajiduni, inshaAllahu min as Oh my father, do as you've been commanded. Indeed, you will find, you indeed, you will find me, inshaAllah, by Allah's will, from the patient ones. In the eyes of negativity, by Allah, remember how the Prophet was. When Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was moving in front and moving in the back at the time of Hijrah, when he was in the cave, when he was despairing, when the Quraysh came, what did the Prophet say? The Prophet said, La tahzan inna Allah ma'ana. Do not despair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, if Allah didn't want good for you, why did he give you the opportunity to listen to this talk? By Allah, Allah loves you all. And by Allah, Allah wants khair for you. And by Allah, Allah wants to see you in Jannah. The question is, do you want to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah? Indeed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in the authentic hadith, whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. And whoever hates to meet Allah, Allah hates to meet him. Ask yourself, are you from those people? My brothers and my sisters in Islam, my brothers, my sisters in Islam, one day the Prophet وسلم, stood up in the depths of the night. It is authentically reported in Al Bukhari that he raised his hands up to the heavens and he said, Oh Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah, Ya Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah, Ya Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. He couldn't say more than that. He couldn't finish his sentences because he was so emotional until the night passed and the last third of the night came until Fajr time came. And at that point, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came down and said, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Allah has sent me and said, Ya Muhammad, your Lord will not disappoint you regarding your ummah. 
your Lord will not disappoint you regarding your ummah. The question is, brothers and sisters of Islam, are we going to disappoint our Prophet ﷺ? Are we going to disappoint our Prophet ﷺ? Allah has promised our Prophet, He will not disappoint him regarding our ummah. The question is us, are we going to otherwise not fulfill the promise of Allah and be a disappointment for our Prophet ﷺ? Be you of those people who fulfill his vision. Be you of those people who fulfill your love for Allah Azzawajal by pursuing the vision of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on this earth. I ask you, my brothers and sisters in Islam, if you're feeling negative because you're constantly criticized in this work, remember what Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah said. He said, Wallahi, Allah loved Abu Bakr and Umar so much that he created a nation of millions of people known as the Shia who would curse Abu Bakr day and night so that by Allah Abu Bakr can take their good deeds and they can take the bad deeds of Abu Bakr and Umar. Allahu Akbar! This is the positivity in the eyes of negativity. It is, this is why a Shafi'i rahimullah used to say, measly is the situation of the person who is not criticized. So do not be afraid of criticism. Do not be afraid of those people who talk too much. Get on and get doing your good deeds. Do not worry about people who criticize and tell you otherwise. For those people who are going through great difficulty in their life, Remember the story of Al Mutanabbi, a great poet in, in Arabia. He used to say, whenever I used to have disease and had difficulty in my body, I used to write the best of poetry, the most emotional poetry. And indeed, I would wait for those times of difficulty because my poetry would be the best. So if you're of those people who are afflicted by difficulty, remember the story of Al Mutanabbi. For those people who are significantly trying to do da'wah to your families, people come to me and say, I've been trying to change my family. I've been trying to change them. Telling my mom to pray, my dad to pray. What message do I have for you? I have the message of the great scholar Abdullah ibn Mubarak. Abdullah ibn Mubarak used to have a Jewish neighbor and he used to give him da'wah for 20 years until a day came when the Khalifa came to Abdullah ibn Mubarak and came to the neighbor of Abdullah ibn Mubarak, the Jewish neighbor, and said, I have to demolish your house because we have to build a road on this path. And what did the Jewish neighbor say? He said, okay, I will sell you my house for 2,000 dinars. So the Khalifa said, why 2,000 when the house is only 1,000 gold dinars? He said 1,000 gold dinars for the house and 1,000 for being the neighbor of Abdullah ibn Mubarak. Then he went to Abdullah ibn Mubarak and accepted Islam. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, those who are despairing that your parents don't listen to you, your wife doesn't pray, your, your husband doesn't listen, your uncle, aunties, your brothers and sisters not listening to you, be patient by Allah. Just like Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Mubarak was. Because when they lose you by Allah, they will surely, surely understand the value that you have come to them. For those people who have lost hope, think that they cannot do any good at all. Remember the story of Al-Saraqsi rahimahullah. Imam Al-Saraqsi, the great scholar of the Hanafi Madhab, was imprisoned in the well for 10 years. But by Allah, this did not stop him. He used to recite at the bottom of the well. He used to recite his book until his students would come at the top of the well and write down everything he used to say until they filled up a volume of 27 volumes of, of a book by the name of al Mabsut. 27 volumes from what a Saraqsi would say from the bottom of the well. Never despair. You can always prove your love to Allah Azza wa Jal, wherever you are in whatever situation you are. For those people who are being harmed, who are being hurt by your families and by your situation now, but Allah, remember the situation, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah. And remember that he was also harmed and hurt for years and years. He was lashed until his, until his arms were out of his sockets. Yet he never gave up being upon the truth. For those people who are looking at the situation, the Muslimin around us, and say there is no hope for this ummah. This ummah is destroyed. Those who look at the situation of Islam and Muslims and the countries of, the, of Islam and Muslims being eaten up by other people. But Allah never despair. Let me tell you what Ibn Kathir says in his Bidaw al Nihaya. And I recite to you the following. He says, A million crusaders entered into Bayt al Maqdis and they did with it what animals do in the forest. And they perpetrated that, that which even the shaitans do not do. In one week, they killed 60,000 people. From them, the scholars, the worshippers, the imams of Masajid, and the ascetics. They put up the cross over Bayt al Maqdis. 
They brought into Bayt al maqdis the pigs and replaced the adhan with the callings of disbelief and shirk. And people cried and they cried and they cried and they thought that Bayt al maqdis would never ever return to the control of Islam and Muslims and that there will never be an end to this trial and tribulation of the people of Islam. So the disgrace upon the believers continued until Allah raised from this ummah a hero who planted the love for the blood of struggling in the path of Allah flow through the veins and he planted the spirit of struggle and valor in the souls and he destroyed the pessimism that had unsheathed the hearts. So there stood the man by the name of Salahuddin and he called out from Ahmaq and Jadana. He said, oh woe to Islam. On that cry, the heroes from the army of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up until they met the crusaders and they killed 30,000 of them and they opened up Al-Quds and they purified the sacred lands from the evil ones. Their victory continued until the crusaders had no option but to pay the jizya from a lowly hand after the crusaders had been the commanders in authority in power for 91 years. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, those who are despairing about the situation of the Ummah, by Allah it could be we are on that 90th year we could be on the 90th year, the year before Allah gives this Ummah victory. Never despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never despair and prove your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go out there, do every work of good. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your deeds acceptable to Him. For those who think that they don't have the skills and the knowledge and the ability, but Allah will tell you, every single person that has made an effect in this dunya, was not a really great man before they became, became great. They were not particularly talented, not particularly educated, not particularly eloquent, but Allah, they had one thing and one thing only, and that was a deep burning desire to achieve something. Gandhi, when he thought that he was going to throw the people out of India, when was that time? He was in the most unique of times when he was being thrown out of the carriage, the first class carriage in South Africa. That is the moment as his cheeks hit the ground as he was being thrown out of the train. He said, I made up my mind at that point that I'm going to free India from the British. Yes, Salaam. This is the nature of visionaries. This is the nature of people who want to do good. That by Allah, their visions are completely, completely illogical sometimes. Completely incomprehensible. Completely, you know, imbecilic sometimes to people. But by Allah, this is the nature of visions. This is the power of vision. This is the power of passion, my brothers of Islam. It's completely illogical, but by Allah, by some heavenly logic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it possible. So my brothers and my sisters in Islam, let this be the call that you all have. Let this be the promise that you all make as you walk out of this conference. So my brothers and my sisters in Islam, make an oath and a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're going to do something to prove your love to Allah azza wa jal. And by Allah, be of those people who fulfill your promise. And I remind you all, lastly, of the ayah and the verse in the Quran. Verily from the believers are those who have fulfilled what they have promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Minhum man qada nahbahu. From them are those people who have already passed away. Wa minhum man yantadir. And from them are those people that are still waiting to fulfill their promise. Wa ma baddalu tabdeela. They have not changed by Allah in their promise. The scholars of tafsir say, this verse was revealed regarding a Sahabi by the name of Anas bin Nadar. Anas bin Nadar radiallahu anhu was a Sahabi who accepted Islam just right after Badr, just before Uhud. And by Allah, when he accepted Islam after Badr but before Uhud, he felt sad. He felt sad. Why did he feel sad? Because he had missed the greatest of battles, the battle of Badr. So he made a promise to Allah, raising his hands to the heavens, said, Ya Rabbi. If you give me another chance, I will prove to you my promise to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a chance and gave him the battle of Uhud. And he fought in the battle of Uhud until they said that he was wounded 36 times all in the front and they could not recognize him except by the tip of his fingers that his sister would, would recognize him for. Why? Because by Allah, he proved his promise to Allah. That if Allah gives him another battle, he will truly prove to Allah how, how much valor he has, how much love he has for this deed, how much he wants to defend this deed. And by Allah, this is the verse that was revealed for him. Verily from believers are those who are truthful to the covenant from Allah. From them are those that have passed away. And from them are those that still await 
their death by Allah. They have not changed in their promise to Allah. Ask yourself this question. Are you going to change in your promise to Allah Azzawajal? Or are you going to be of the believers that are from the men and the women that are true believers? Hold on to your promise and be Allah make a true change in this ummah. Zakumullah khair, my brothers in Islam. I hope that be Allah you all benefited. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.